Hello Mopar fans. Today we've got the Chrysler or Mopar M6 transmission that uh, is found in many uh, Chrysler products through the 40s and up to about 54 I believe. And uh, it is a semi-auto auto transmission that is hydraulically activated and um, I came across a spare transmission so I thought I'd take it apart and learn all about it. This is the same transmission that's uh, in my car behind here. It's a 53 Chrysler uh, Windsor Deluxe. It's got the straight six in it. So this relies on signals from ground speed and some voltage and hydraulic pressure to um, activate um, the shifting. And I'll kind of try and explain that to you here. So this end of the transmission over here is the input shaft. So the engine, the torque converter, and the clutch are over here, and the power comes through this shaft, goes inside the transmission. It appears to uh, most people that the power goes right through this drive shaft all the way through and out the back of the transmission here. This is the rear drive shaft. But in reality, that's not the case. There's a gear behind the housing here in this area, and it drops down below here is a counter shaft. The power comes down through the counter shaft and then goes back up to the main shaft and out. And you select which gears are locked together by sliding the collar ring from when you're sitting in the driver's seat, you select either high or low range. I think it's labeled drive and low. Drive is third and fourth gear, low is first and second gear. So essentially what you're doing is right here there's a shift collar. And in the middle of position, it's in neutral, and you slide it left or right to engage either the gear, um, locking the gear to the output shaft in either first or third gear. I'll give you an example of that. So in here is a sliding collar, and you slide it forward or back when you shift the transmission into whatever drive gear you want. When you select reverse, there's the linkages here. There's a shift fork that goes into this gear right here. And it, the little fork wraps around this part of the gear. And this gear slides over and connects into the reverse range. So reverse is very simple and easy to engage. So I'll slide this shaft out of here now. You can have a look. Back in the transmission housing. And um, this over here, that's the input shaft coming in, I discussed earlier, it comes in and it rotates this gear here. And you can see there's no shaft here. I pulled it out, it locks in there. But the power goes through this gear, into this gear, and along this counter shaft down here. I believe this is third gear, and over here at this end is first gear. So I showed you on the, uh, the shaft that I pulled out on the floor down there. When you select, you go from neutral, you're sliding this collar into, this is first gear back here, this is third gear at the front. It's all you're sliding. And there are synchro meshes in there to line up. So what you do, this, this gear is spinning freely on the output shaft. Like I said, the power comes down to the counter shaft. Then when you slide this and you lock third gear in, you're locking this gear to the shaft. Now the power that was at the counter shaft is going through third gear and out. If you're in first gear, you're up here. The power, sorry, that was first, this is third. Now the power comes down the counter shaft. This gear is locked in, in constant mesh to the counter shaft. Now you've, you've locked this gear to the output shaft. Power goes through that way. Here's neutral. So those are the only parts that you're controlling when you're shifting this transmission in high or low range. After that, hydraulic power takes over. In the back of the transmission housing, in behind here, in this area, there's an oil pump and it spins. It's a gear pump and it makes oil pressure. That oil pressure, uh, it takes oil from the, from the cavity of the transmission down in the housing down here. There's oil sitting in there. And it pulls the oil through this screen right here into the oil pump. What it does, it, uh, it sends oil pressure 
through the transmission into this area down in here. You can't really see it from this angle, but inside of here is a hydraulic a, a piston inside a cylinder. And the oil pressure um, builds up from the transmission oil pump at the back of the transmission there, and that is driven by ground speed. The faster you drive, the oil pump works. The oil pump is not making any power at all when you're in sitting still, parked. So as you drive, the transmission oil builds pressure. And under all the right conditions, when you have oil pressure, and you have ground speed, of course, and um, you left your foot off the gas, there's a solenoid in the transmission that opens, it, uh, it, it shuts off power then oil flows into this piston. It pushes the piston forward. And the piston is connected to a shift fork, which is right here on this gear. Can you see the shift fork? I don't know if you can see it, it's behind there. That's called a direct drive clutch. That then locks up, slides forward. Here's the shifting fork right here. And it's engaged into this, they call this direct speed drive clutch um, ring or something like that. This piston inside of this housing, here's a rod for the piston. It pushes forward, pushes this gear forward, and then locks the input shaft, the transmission power from the engine. Um, I guess it would be engine power. Goes through the input shaft, locks into this ring, and right out the back of the transmission. And then, 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 the, uh, the drive shaft, the main shaft from the front to the back, it acts as one drive shaft straight through. You're not using the counter shaft at that point. Here you can see the counter shaft gear down in this area. And uh, that's reverse gear there I told you about, sliding, reverse gear. This is the counter shaft. So it's interesting how this transmission works. Um, when you uh, drive the transmission, this is a governor switch, and this spins. It's hooked to, it screws into the side of the transmission on the other side, and it spins. And the faster it spins, there's little centrifugal weights inside that open up. Then the six volt power going to it stops. What that six volt power does is it goes to this solenoid. When there's six volt power present, the solenoid, the pin is pushed out. And it pushes a little steel ball bearing against a valve seat inside the transmission, this little ball right here. And when these switch, when you're going fast, the switch opens up, disconnects power to here. Now this pin goes in like that. The little ball valve gets pushed off its seat by a spring. Now you've got oil going into that piston right there I told you about. The piston pushes forward this way, pushes the direct drive clutch that I showed you into the input shaft, and then you've got to shift. So really, once you select high or low range down here, like I showed you before, you set it in high range, you're in third gear, it stays there, it does not move. Until it builds pressure, you let your foot off the gas, the switch opens, the solenoid engage, disengages, piston automatically takes over, and that's your hydraulic activated shift. When you slow down, you're driving on the road in fourth gear, you come to a traffic light, and you, uh, you slow down. This governor here, which is connected to the drive output drive shaft, is, is slowing down, and then the switch is closed again. Then power goes back to the solenoid, you let your foot off the gas, and the transmission releases the oil inside the cylinder here, and transmission downshifts back into the lower gear. So that's, that's a neat transmission, and that's kind of a high level description of how it works. Um, hopefully you're able to uh, learn a little bit from that as I did. I didn't know anything about these transmissions until a few days ago. I got a spare and took it apart. So, anyways, have fun out there.